Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. This video, I will be featuring the Kai 162-3, a Japanese fighter. This aircraft is equipped with two 30 millimeter cannons that do 240 damage per second with a 260 round per minute rate of fire and an effective firing range of 650 meters. This aircraft is indicated as having high airspeed and a good boost, uh, which I think is a huge exaggeration. Uh, it, it has the typical, terrible Japanese six second fighter engine boost, uh, which I cannot describe as being a good boost. So there you have that. Um, it is stated to have high maneuverability, and certainly it does. That's in horizontal turns. And is said to be very effective in intercepting aircraft at high altitude. Now with this aircraft, I will be trying out two builds. One will be based upon an enhanced maneuverability and engine build, and the other will be based upon an enhanced maneuverability and gun accuracy build. You are currently looking at the gun accuracy, what I call the gun accuracy build, and it features as upgrades lightweight airframe 4, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 3%, and Control Surface Adjustment 4, which increases maneuverability in turns by 3%. And then Gyroscopic Gun Sight, which increases firing accuracy by 10%. Now you may say, well, you know, uh, Kirishin, this aircraft already has high maneuverability. Why do you need more maneuverability? Well, first off, the maneuverability is in horizontal turns. Uh, and if this aircraft needed to turn only in horizontal turns, well then, you know, there you have it. But the aircraft needs to, you know, be able to maneuver in all axes, and so therefore lightweight airframe 4. Uh, in addition, high maneuverability is not very high maneuverability. And you take, for example, a yak at this level, and it has very high maneuverability. So if you get in a dogfight with it, you could lose. Uh, hence, we did. Uh, I did equip uh, the control surface adjustment four, which increases the maneuverability in turns by three percent. I want this aircraft to be the best or one of the best maneuvering aircraft on the battlefield. And you know, my biggest complaint, number one complaint about this aircraft, are the 30 millimeter cannons. I find it a real challenge to hit things with those 30 millimeter cannons. I much prefer uh, 20 millimeter cannons which, with a much higher rate of fire, but this only has two 30 millimeter cannons, and so it can be a challenge, at least for me, to hit targets sometimes, and that's why I went with gyroscopic gun sight. Likewise, with pilot skills on this accuracy build, I have Equip Marksman 1, which reduces dispersion of forward firing weapons by 5%, significantly increases the chance of hitting a target, as well as Marksman 2, which reduces dispersion of forward firing weapons by 5% and increases accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%, which is cumulative with the effect of Marksman 1. I've also gone with Aerodynamics Expert, which increases by 40% uh, the effects of our lightweight airframe and our control surface adjustment uh, upgrades. And to fight fires without having to use fire extinguisher as a consumable, I've gone with fire resistance, which reduces duration and damage of fire by 20%. Now, in our maneuverability and engine build, instead of these uh, accuracy and dispersion skills, I would go with Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, along with uh, Aerodynamics Expert and still Fire Resistance. So that would be the difference on the 
uh, engine slash maneuverability build. If I had two more skill points for this pilot, I would go with aerobatics expert. In terms of ammunition, I went with universal ammunition, which for the 30 millimeter cannons has a medium to low chance of fire and a high chance of critical damage, which one would expect with such cannons. For consumables, I went uh, with uh, all gold consumables that have 60 second cooldowns and activate automatically versus their non-gold versions, which have 90 second cooldowns and activate manually. Uh, specifically, I chose Control Surface Auto Trim, which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail, automatic engine restarter, uh, self-explanatory, your engine gets knocked out, gets it back into action, first aid kit, which automatically heals the crew and provides temporary resistance to injury. So when our pilot gets uh, injured and we can't hit anything because of that, um, this gets our pilot back to health so that we can put rounds on the target again, which is absolutely, absolutely critical for this aircraft. In terms of the Chi-162's specifications, its altitude uh, performance, optimum altitude is 2,000 meters. Uh, you know, it says it's, you know, very uh, adept at taking on aircraft at high altitude, eh, 2,000 meters, not the best by any means. Um, you have your heavy fighters that are going, you know, 2,500, 3,000 meters. Uh, so you, you get much above the 2,000 meters, this aircraft can be vulnerable. Uh, time to turn 360 degrees, 9 seconds, which is very good. Rate of roll, 130 uh, degrees per second, not too bad. Optimum air speed is 500 kilometers per hour. Stall speed is 160 kilometers per hour. Top speed at best altitude 920 kilometers per hour, which is you know pretty good, not bad at all. Looking at paint schemes, this is summer, winter, desert, and marine. Not a big fan of the paint schemes on this aircraft. Not a big fan of the looks of this aircraft. I just don't like these engines on top, both because they don't look good in my book. You know, I, the beholder, I understand. But also, practically speaking, you know, it's very difficult. How do you tell when an aircraft's on your tail when you can't, as a pilot, look back in a mirror or anything like that and see behind you? Uh, the engines are right there, up, you know, greatly obscuring your view. So just not a big fan of those. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we will head to our aircraft comparison chart that I've developed and compare the Chi-162-3 to its other Tier 10 fighter peers. All right, so we are looking at my aircraft comparison chart, and I have lined up the various different Tier 10 fighters to compare against the Chi-162-3. And we will be looking at time to turn 360 degrees, hit points, airspeed, and when I refer to airspeed, I'm talking about the top speed at best altitude, guns, and in terms of guns, we are looking at the total collective damage the gun armaments on a particular aircraft can do uh, together. Then altitude, which is the optimum altitude. And finally, roll. Now, when you look at this chart, the first conclusion that you really have to reach is that there's no reason to choose the Chi-162-3 as your aircraft. For example, if you look at the LA-15 and compare it against the Chi-162-3, you see that they have the same time to turn 360 degrees, which is nine seconds, but the LA-15 has greater hit points, has a greater airspeed, has more damage per second for its 
gun armaments, has the same altitude, and has a better rate of roll. So when you look at all those factors where the LA-15 clearly outshines the Chi-162-3, you just really have no reason to choose the Chi-162-3 over the LA-15. Among all of these groups, one clear winner comes out. And with each one of these aircraft, there are strengths and there are weaknesses. But looking at those strengths and weaknesses overall, my conclusion is that the MEP-1101, the German uh, Tier 10 fighter, is your best choice. It has a 10 second time to turn 360 degrees. So very close to the uh, nine, it's nine second competitors. The Yak-30 I kind of take out of the running because it, it's optimum altitude is 1500 meters. So it's very much a low altitude fighter. Uh, it's just not gonna be able to hold its own at any higher altitude. It has typical hit points for this tier. Uh, certainly there are some aircraft that have higher hit points like the F-86A Sabre. Uh, and some of them have uh, 500 hit points, but nonetheless, it's competitive. It has an excellent airspeed at 950 kilometers per hour, which is very competitive with the, you know, even the aircraft that have 1,000 kilometers per hour or 1,050 kilometers per hour. You know, certainly having 1,000 kilometers per hour versus 950 is an advantage, but not so much of an advantage that it outweighs other benefits of going with the MEP-1101. And where the MEP-1101 really shines is with regard to its gun armaments with a total collective damage per second of 800, which is the highest on this tier. And those 20 millimeter cannons are really effective you know some of the 30 37 millimeter cannons are hard to hit other targets whereas the 20 millimeter cannons uh, you don't really have a hard time hitting other targets another important factor that i want to point out about the mep 1101's gun armaments is its effective firing range the longest effective firing range of all the aircraft at this tier is 800 meters and the MEP-1101 uh, is at that 800 meters. There are other aircraft in this list that have uh, 800 meter effective firing range ranges, but uh, it's just one more factor to consider in concluding that the MEP-1101 is an excellent aircraft at this tier. In comparison, the chi 162-3's effective firing range of its gun armaments is in the 600s. And that can be an important factor, especially if you're going head to head with other aircraft, you're going to be putting rounds on the other target sooner than they could put rounds on your aircraft. And you have excellent altitude at 2,500 meters. Uh, you know, it's not the 2,800 meters of the F-86A or the MiG 15 BIS, but still it's very competitive at 2,500 meters and it has a fairly good, you know, rate of roll of, of 130 degrees per second. So my choice, again, overall for this particular tier is the MEP-1101, which is an aircraft that I really enjoy. A second viable option would be the MiG-15 BIS, again, a 10 second Time to turn 360 degrees, not too bad. Has a very good airspeed of 1,020 kilometers per hour. Not too bad in gun armaments at 660 damage per second. And an excellent optimum altitude of 2,800 meters. So because of that 2,800 meter altitude, it's a very versatile fighter to choose. Another good option would be the Swift. Although its gun armaments are slightly less than some other aircraft like the uh, P-1101 and the FW-252, it still has good altitude. It has excellent airspeed, uh, the highest airspeed 
in this tier even higher than the MIG-15 BIS. And it has the 10 second time to turn 360 degrees. Now it does suffer a little bit in the roll department at only, only 120 degrees per second, but you know, that's a, a minor deficiency. So again, bottom line conclusion, no reason to choose the Kai 162.3 at this tier. If you're looking for the best performing fighter overall, it's not the Kai 162.3. In my opinion, it's the MEP 1101. I hope that helps put these various different aircraft in perspective and can help you choose what aircraft line you want to go with at level 10. Okay, so having gone over my two builds for this aircraft, Again, one being an accuracy slash maneuverability build, the other being an engine slash maneuverability build. What we will do now is to take each one of those builds with this aircraft into battles and see how they perform. So our battle in the Kai 162.3 will be over the Road to Rome Outpost Theater of Operation. We'll be headed to the command center first, get that secured, get bombers inbound to the enemy sectors, and then we'll head to the forward airstrip. Cover your allies, hit the enemy, and we shall win. Yes, indeed, we are going to hit the enemy. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So not the loveliest of planes, but it is very maneuverable. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. got the typical Japanese fighter six second engine boost which is you know lackluster but hey it is what it is right the biggest challenge I have with this aircraft is just hitting targets with those cannons definitely be a challenge. There are only two of them. Alright. more here. Hold still now. This won't hurt. Well, <laughs> maybe it'll hurt a little. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. A low health fighter sneaking in on us over here. Who oh, had a low health fighter? See if we can catch up to it pretty fast. Zoom in 
here and make it a little easier. I'm just not a big fan of zooming too much just because you get, you know, tunnel vision so much more. We've captured the enemy military base. Things should get easier now. It's easier for things to sneak up behind you. Really have to lead these heavy fighters are so fast. A rocket has reached the target. Enemy objects damaged. I'd like to get this fighter before we get shut down here. Darn it. I keep missing. Ugh, couldn't hit it. Did I get it? I don't know. Alright, let's head into the airfield here. Oh, there was a <laughs> 162 we almost killed if we could have just hit the darn thing. And that is our human ground attack aircraft pilot there. So we need to deal with him. doesn't drop a bomb on us here. Yeah, just like that, see? That's why I held back just a little. That was a close one. I don't know how we survived that one. I saw the bomb drop. And I was like, uh oh boy, that could hurt. XF-90. That is about the fastest aircraft in this game. Not even going to bother trying to catch that. Pretty sure he's going to come back to us, though. F eighty six A here. Hang in there. You'll soon be cut off from support. You're definitely more maneuverable than it is. Keep it up. Victory is almost ours. Something was shooting at us. Let's see what we have here. Heavy fighter here, javelin. All from the distance though. turns our way here so we can take some shots at it. Javelin is another one of those you any heavy fighters that can really get up there. Over. And I'm hoping we're going to get him as he turns around. What we definitely don't want to do is go head to head with it. He may just burn out. All right, let's head back down here. 
I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. All right, so number one spot on the team, two chevrons on the grade rank, subjugator, effective fire, and flying start. Take a look here at the after action report. Pretty convincing win there by the team. Okay, so looking at our after action report here, we have seven aerial targets uh, destroyed, so seven kills, three assists, over 4,800 in damaged aerial targets, which is really high. And uh, two sectors captured, so that was good. Got destroyed once, but we did avenge ourselves, so excellent. Always good to get revenge. <laughs> and 107,000 plus in credits, over 11,000 in experience points 556 in free experience over 8600 in combat points so good result there for the Kai 162.3 I think the biggest challenge with this aircraft is just hitting targets with those two 30 millimeter cannons it can be a challenge So we'll be testing out our accuracy build on the Kai 162-3 over the Road to Rome Trap Theater of Operation. Attention, you are entering the zone controlled by the enemy. And we are going to head to the command center first, as I think it is the most important sector we can capture. And then uh, from there, if we have not already secured the garrison, we will head there. And it will be interesting to see to what degree this accuracy build increases our Show me what you can ability do, to Let's roll. put rounds on targets. As, uh, you know, as you know, I struggle with these 30 million cannons. Looks like we just need one more aircraft, which is not available right now. So there's a ground target we can finish off. Or let's see. Okay, there we go. I'll help from a bomber. And no doubt I'm going to be getting some enemy ground attack aircraft probably heading over here to this stronghold some multi-roll coming let's see where is that multi-roll there's our ground attack aircraft to worry about. Okay, we're gonna stay away from bombs not want to be killed by a bomb. Alright. So let's see here. Do we have 
going on up here. Got a MIG. Kind of low in health. Careful here, we don't end up too high and vulnerable. Fella to hold still. Using short bursts because these uh, cannons just really overheat. And this looks like a uh, human pilot here for sure. this fellow but I got him little short bursts have to be patient with these guns. Fighter here. One of my favorite fighters, actually. Love the cannons on those. that German fighter go. So I held on too long. Alright. Looks like we, no one's gotten the uh, stronghold over there yet. We'll head over here and see what we can do at the command center.
is doing pretty well so far. Check on what we're doing here. Get back down here, we'll work on this command center. There we go. Looks like our bombers finished it off. Finish off this ground attack Attention aircraft. All fighters. Enemy bombers detected. Destroy them. I think that might uh, garner us the win if we kill this. Not quite. There we I'm go. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. All right. So, flying warrior badge. Number one spot on the team, two chevrons on the grade rank, hunt for hawk, and subjugator. I'm guessing we'll probably get effective fire once we get back and take a look at the after action report, which we will do now. Alright, so 12 kills, 3 assists, over 5300 in damaged aerial targets, which is very good. See here, two sectors captured. And uh, almost 130,000 in credits, uh, almost 14,000 in XP, 692 in free XP, over 10,000 in combat points, which is very good. So I think, you know, that was a good result for our accuracy build. Uh, it did perceive it to be easier to put rounds on the targets. Uh, still a challenge and uh, the guns really overheat so you have to just focus on being disciplined by with short bursts. Uh, I have to say uh, just you know and I mentioned it earlier but just not my favorite aircraft. Um, not a very attractive aircraft, not a very practical aircraft. I mean, having those engines positioned the way they are, you know, the, the 30 millimeter cannons, just not a big fan of them. Much prefer the higher rate of fire 20 millimeter cannons. All right, so anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And, uh, you know, you may be a fan of the Kai 162-3, and if you get an opportunity to fly this aircraft, 
I hope you have great success in it.